Our final speaker, Dr. Muzammil Siddiqui, was a close associate of Dr. Hassan Hathout. He is the former president of the Islamic Society of North America and currently the president of the Fiqh Council of North America. For those unfamiliar with the term, Fiqh is the Arabic word for Islamic jurisprudence. Dr. Siddiqui received his early education at Dar al Uloom, Nadwat al Ulama in India, and received his degree in Arabic and Islamic studies from the University of Medina in Saudi Arabia. He then moved to Britain, where he earned a Master's of Theology, and later to the United States, where he received a PhD in Comparative Religions at Harvard University. Dr. Siddiqui was Chairman of the Department of Religious Affairs at the Muslim World League Office to the US and the United Nations. Currently, he is Chairman of the Shura Council of Southern California and Director of the Islamic Society of Orange County. Please welcome Dr. Muzzam al-Siddiqui. Assalamu alaikum. Peace be unto all of you. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah. In the name of Allah, the most merciful, the compassionate. Praise be to God, the Lord of the worlds, and peace and blessings be upon his prophets and messengers, all the prophets and messengers of God. Thank you, Dr. Eva, for uh, this kind invitation. I'm honored to speak in this forum dedicated to the memory of and legacy of our dear, respected brother, friend, teacher, Dr. Hassan Hathout. May God bless his soul. He was a man of great spirit. I am honored that I had a, some time to spend with him and known him personally. I'm glad that we are talking on this subject in his memory. As the previous speakers spoke on this subject, and we can see that how similar our traditions are, uh, in Islam we believe that we human beings are made of body and spirit. The spirit is from the breath of our Lord, the Creator. And this is called Ruh in Arabic, or the Hebrew word Ruah. The Quran says, your Lord said to the angels, I will create a mortal out of dried clay formed from dark mud. When I have fashioned him and breathed my spirit into him, bow down before him. From dark mud, from clay, God made a being and his breath made even angels to bow down. The nature of the spirit is not easy to understand. The Quran says, they ask you concerning ruh. Say, O Prophet, it is part of my Lord's domain. And you have been given of knowledge only little. Body and spirit have a very interesting combination. Body is visible, spirit is invisible. Body is mortal, the spirit is immortal. Body has race, color, gender. The spirit transcends all these limitations. Body is from the earth. The spirit is from heaven. Without spirit, body is only dirt. Spirit gives life, dignity, and honor to the body. Spirit integrates and unites. Body divides and separates. We cannot ignore our bodies. We have to take care of, our, of, of the needs of the body by proper food, exercise, rest, etc. We are born in particular families, societies, cultures, and we have our belongings and our commitments. There are some traditions that say spirit cannot rise above unless the body is put down. You have to get rid of the desires and the, and the bones of the body. Then your body, when your body and your spirit is released from the bones of the, of the flesh, then and then only you can rise above. To care for the spirit, they say, you must renounce the needs of the body. 
you must modify your bodies leave the family business and community islamic tradition says your body has a right on you and at the same time it says you have to take care of your spirit the virtue is that which is good for the body and the spirit both the sin harms the body and the spirit both just as body needs nourishing the spirit also needs nourishing quest for the nourishing of the spirit is the common theme of the religions it is essential for solving many problems that we human beings face every day without nurturing the spirit we cannot solve the problems of greed hate and violence many problems that human beings are facing today are not because of lack of physical or material resources the main problem is the poverty and the malnourishment of the spirit so we are discussing a real subject very much needed how to nurture and nourish the spirit islam teaches that the spirit cannot be nurtured and nourished unless it is connected to its source this needs three things sincere faith purity and charity hypocrisy corrupts the spirit sincere faith and sincere relation with god enhances the spirit the lifestyle must be pure and good one should avoid sins of lust pride and greed charity means kindness to others wishing for others what one wishes for oneself the quran and the prophetic teachings abound on that we have several important terms that we use one of the very strong terms from those of you familiar with that is rabbaniya that means godliness become godly people the other is ihsan goodness have excellence and goodness in your life tazkiya purification and growth purify yourself continuously purify yourself and grow so nurturing the spirit means th- linking the spirit to its source becoming conscious of god islam teaches that human personality has its outward aspect and the inward aspect unless the inward is good the outward cannot be reformed jesus peace be upon him is reported to have said criticizing some people woe to you teachers of the law you hypocrites you cleanse the outside of the cup and dish but inside they are full of greed and self indulgence matthew chapter 23 prophet muhammad taught us to pray lord make my inward better than my outward and make my outward righteous so spirit heart soul reason are all the inner dimensions of the human beings very often we ignore these inner dimensions and outward dominates the inward and corrupts the inward the quran mentions three modalities or three characteristics of the human soul the one is called an nafsul ammara bis su this is the aspect of the soul that instigates human beings to evil it may be translated as lower soul or appetitive soul it is the inner locus of immoderate desires and fiery passions some call it sensuous or sensual the second modality is called a nafsul lawama or the blaming soul it refers to that aspect of the soul which blames or criticizes itself and that is that is to say which becomes aware of its own evil and challenges it is the locus of moral consciousness this is the rational ego this is what the philosophers call aql reason or intellect the third modality is called an nafsul mutmainna or the contented soul the soul in which the turbulences of desires and passions have been calmed down leading to peace and tranquility this is also called al qalbul salim the pure and sound heart it is the threshold of the divine dimension of being 
it is the nurtured spirit. The true and authentic personality begins not from outward appearances, but from inward purity and growth. Nurturing the spirit means becoming conscious and mindful of the Creator, always in every situation. It is called in the Quranic terminology taqwa. This is the sum total of all Islamic values. It being, it comes from faith, sincere action. The spirit is nurtured, Islam teaches, by the acts of worship, devotion, five daily prayers, fasting in the month of Ramadan, pilgrimage to Mecca, charity or zakat are all social acts, but their primary objective is to nurture the spirit. By worshipping God, we come closer to God. And God comes closer to us. The Quran says, make sajda come closer. Sajda is the, the, when we put our head on the ground, prostration. Make sajda come closer. And God also says in another hadith, in a hadith Qudsi, my servant comes to me by acts of devotion until I love him. When I love him, I am his eyes by which he sees, his ear by which he hears, his hand by which he holds, and his feet by which he walks. When we take care of our spirit, it transforms our body. Actually, it makes our body better. The inward then reflects the outward. Recitation of the Quran, the scripture, as I mentioned before, recitation of the Quran enhances the spirit. The Quran is actually called, the Quran calls itself a spirit of the divine command, Ruham min Amrina. It teaches human spirit and uplifts the human spirit. The Prophet says, these hearts get rusted as the iron gets rusted. The people ask how to polish our hearts, how to cleanse them. He said, read the Quran more often. And remember, your life is not forever. Remember death. Deeds of charity increase and enhance spirituality. Charity, even a smile is charity. You heard the beautiful story of a smile. And working and struggling for peace and justice, helping the poor, the needy, the oppressed. These are all acts of charity. They nurture and shine the spirit. So those who nurture their spirit, their lives become beautiful. They live in peace and tranquility. They become the people of love, care, and compassion. They are stable in their character. They do not change when others change. They do not do good to others only when others do good to them. But they pay for the coffee also. Even, very <laughs> beautiful story that tell that. They even do good to those who show anger and animosity towards them. They are patient and steadfast. Their actions are not superficial. They are recognized not by their appearances, but by their behavior and character. The more we nurture our spirit, the more we can come closer to each other, crossing all the divisions and barriers of races, colors, nationalities, and even religions. <clears throat> then we shall see the spirit of God in each one of us. And that is a big task. And that is what we have to work on. So thank you, Dr. Iba, for bringing this point. And may God bless Dr. Hassan Hathud for raising this consciousness in us. May God bless him. Thank you. Amen.